Hello. In this problem, we're given uh, x and y expressed parametrically in terms of a parameter t. So this represents some kind of curve in the plane. Not clear exactly what the curve would look like. That would be harder to draw. Probably in this case, I'd use maple to draw this for me. I want to find the equation of the normal to this curve um, at the value t equals 2. And then I'm going to eliminate t from, this, uh, from these equations and find dy dx um, without any t's in it, just in terms of x's and y's. And so there's sort of two methods in which we're going to find the derivative, because we'll need to get the derivative in order to get the gradient of the normal. For in the first part, I do it parametrically. In the second part, we're going to get the derivative um, probably using implicit differentiation. And it's so nice to compare and contrast the two approaches to it. So the first one, I want to get the equation of the normal. So I think, well, normal, that's perpendicular to the tangent. I get the tangent gradient by taking the derivative. I should worry, too, about what the, um, a point on the normal, so I might calculate that first. So at t equals 2, then I, can have, I have x is equal to 2 thirds and y is equal to 2. So I calculate that point on there at the point t equals 2. Now I'm going to calculate dx dt and I'm going to calculate dy dt. Before I do that, I'm just going to make life a little bit easier for myself. You don't have to do this. You could work out dx dt using the quotient rule. Perfectly fine. Here's just a little trick that is worth seeing from time to time, and that is I'm going to try and simplify this a little bit. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add 1 to the top, and then I can divide. Then I've got to subtract 1. It makes the calculus just a little bit easier. So I'm adding 1 to the top, and then subtracting 1, and then I can do some cancelling. And that I can do the same thing with the y. So here I'd subtract 1 from the top, and then add 1. So I get that expression. Don't have to do that, you can just use the quotient rule to get the derivatives. But now to get dx dt is much easier because that goes differentiates to 0 and this one should be an old friend by now so this is 1 over t plus 1 all squared and similarly dy dt That'll differentiate to 0, and this will give me minus 1 over t minus 1 all squared. So that gives me the derivatives with respect to t, and finally then the derivative that I'm looking for dy dx parametrically is going to be dy dt divided by dx dt. dy dt divided by dx dt. So I'm going to get that one divided by that, and that will simply give me minus 1 on t plus 1 squared on t minus 1 squared. So I'm taking this one here, divided by that, so I can invert and multiply. Now we know the value of t, so I can plug the value of t in now. So I put, put t equals 2 in, I get 1 in the denominator. This gives me minus 9 at t equals 2. Don't forget to write some English in, just explain what you're doing. And that gives me the gradient then of the tangent to this curve at t equals 2. That is at this point uh, when x is 2 thirds and y is 2. So the gradient of the normal, gradient of the normal is, well, it's got to multiply by that to give me minus 1, so that's going to be 1 over 9. And I can now write down the equation of the normal. is I've got y minus my point, that's 2, is the gradient times x minus 2 thirds. And I can tidy that equation up and you can multiply through by 27 and rearrange, but I think I'm just going to leave that as it is at the moment. You can rearrange that later yourself. So for part b then, I'm going to eliminate t from this and find the derivative uh, dy dx. Here we found dy dx parametrically in terms of t, and I want to find it just in terms of x and y by eliminating t. 
Now, when you look at these two expressions here, I think you should realise that that's not going to be uh, necessarily a terribly easy thing to do. One way of tackling it, if you happen to see this step here, you could use these equations to make t the subject of this and t the subject of that. That's one way of doing it. If you didn't happen to see that and you were just going back to here and you wanted to eliminate t, well, you've got to do a little bit more algebra. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cross multiply this. So I'm going to get xt plus x equals t. So I'm going to take all the t's over to this side. And so I get x is equal to t into 1 minus x. And therefore, I can write t then is x over 1 minus x. So I do a similar thing for the y. So I cross multiply and I get yt minus y equals t. And I'm going to take all the t's over this side and the y's over there. So I get t into y minus 1 equals y. And I can get t is y over y minus 1. Now that I've got t in, t in terms of um, x's and y's, I can now eliminate t by equating those. So therefore, I can say x over 1 minus x is equal to y over y minus 1. And I can cross multiply. And so I get xy minus x equals y minus xy. And I probably want to just rearrange this a bit and write this as 2xy equals x plus y. So I've eliminated t at that point. By the way, you probably won't recognise, because I don't, exactly what this curve looks like. Again, you get maple to draw this. This is implicitly defined. So after eliminating t from these two equations, we saw that that was the Cartesian equation. And again, it's not clear at all what this looks like geometrically, so maple would be the, the way to go to see what it looks like. What I want to do now is find the derivative of the find dy dx from this using implicit differentiation. So it's good revision of our implicit differentiation. So I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So differentiate the left side with respect to x. Well, I'm going to need the product rule. So I copy the first and differentiate the second. So I'll write that symbolically as y dashed plus differentiate the first, I get 2, and copy the second, so I get y. On the other side, I differentiate x, I get 1. Differentiate y, you get y dashed. So to finish it off then, I'm just going to take all the terms with y dashed on one side, so that's 2x minus 1, and take all the other terms on the other side. And therefore, I get the derivative, which is equal to 1 minus 2y, over 2x minus 1. And there's the derivative of the function expressed now in terms of x's and y's. So before we worked out the derivative in parametric form, and now we're working out the derivative in the Cartesian form. By the way, in general, it's not always possible to eliminate the parameter algebraically. In this particular case, we could, but in many problems, it's algebraically impossible to eliminate the, the parameter, and that's why we need to do things parametrically. In this case, we were able to eliminate the parameter, so we could get expressions for the derivatives in two different ways. I'll leave you to finish off the rest of the problem, uh, which was to evaluate this uh, at the point t equals 2, substituting in the points and getting the gradient of the normal, which we calculated before anyway. Thank you.